Hey, explorers, it's Brian here. Am I in Europe? Am I in Asia? You may find yourself with me here in St. Petersburg, Russia, asking yourself that same question. Due to the fact that Europe and Asia are cultural constructs and not physically separate continents, countries on the landmass of Eurasia, that is, the landmass that contains Europe and Asia, could really be both European and Asian. And speaking of landmasses, well, today our learning objective is to be able to identify the countries of Eastern Europe and their land characteristics, bodies of water, and climate. Now, Eastern Europe is not only in the middle of Eurasia, it also straddles the cultural border of Asia and Europe, making the designation of countries in this region as murky as a Latvian peat bog. <laughs> Let's try to bridge the gap for you a bit, as well as tell you more about this fascinating and vast area of land. Location Eastern Europe consists of Russia, Poland, Belarus, Ukraine, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Azerbaijan, Georgia, and Armenia. Now, some may point out that Russia, Georgia, Azerbaijan, and Armenia could be classified as Asian countries. And others will argue that Poland belongs in Central Europe. For the purpose of our lesson, we will group these countries together in Eastern Europe. Historically, Russia has dominated Eastern Europe, particularly for the last century. I mean, look at it. It's just so big. Russia and the Soviet Union, as you learned in an earlier lesson, exerted considerable political and cultural influence over other countries in this area. Not too long ago, the land we're looking at today would have consisted of just two countries instead of ten, just Poland and the Soviet Union, which absorbed the eight other countries, among others. When this massive conglomeration of lands was finally dissolved in 1991, sovereignty was returned to the independent republics that you see on the map. Nowadays, however, emphasizing these countries' ties to communist Russia is becoming more and more outdated. Many of these smaller countries have successfully removed themselves from the towering shadow of the biggest house on the Eastern European bloc and revived the vibrant culture which has existed among their people for thousands of years. But we'll learn more about culture in another lesson. For now, let's break down the physical characteristics of Eastern Europe. The Land Eastern Europe's natural borders include the Ural Mountains, the Caucasus Mountains, the Baltic Sea, the Barents Sea, the Black Sea, and the Caspian Sea. Now, if you decide to walk across this region, well, good luck. It's huge. You'll definitely reach your 10,000-step goal every day. However, your fitness tracker most likely wouldn't register too many floors climbed because this land is flat. You may remember learning about the East European Plain. This long, flat landmass occupies most of Eastern Europe, covering about 2 million square miles. It's the main reason why Europe has the lowest average elevation of any continent. If you look at a world map, the first country you're likely to notice is Russia. Russia is big. And yes, it spans two continents. The Ural Mountains are a north to south mountain range that is considered the border of European Russia and Asian Russia. We'll pay particular attention to the European part of Russia today. As we mentioned, Russia is a massive country. It covers one-tenth of all land on Earth, nearly 6.6 .6 million square miles. If you combine Canada, the world's second biggest country, and the U.S., those two countries are barely bigger than Russia by itself. The European portion of Russia, at 1.5 million square miles, occupies about 40% of European land. And if you travel across Russia, be prepared for some serious jet lag. It stretches over 11 time zones. By comparison, Hawaii and New York are just five hours apart, or six during daylight savings time. Russia has coastline on 12 seas and three oceans. The Arctic, Pacific, and Atlantic by way of the Baltic Sea. It has over 100,000 rivers, including the Volga, the longest in Europe. And it also features many enormous lakes, including Europe's two largest, the Ladoga and the Onega. While much of Russia lies on the East European plain, areas near the Ural and Caucasus can, of course, be quite mountainous. 
So just to recap, if you're going to sum up Russia in one word, it would probably be big. Oh yeah, we left some things out. It has Eurasia's largest active volcano, a swamp bigger than Switzerland, the deepest lake in the world. Well, we could go on all day here. But we can't bear to have Russia overshadow its neighbors. Oh, yeah, Russia also has bears that weigh as much as a small car. But we have another nine countries to explore. The only countries in this region outside the East European plain are the Transcaucasian countries. Transcaucasia is a region that lies on the south side of the Caucasus Mountains and contains Georgia, Armenia, and Azerbaijan. These countries are on the south side of the Caucasus Mountains, which is a mountain range at the border of Europe and Asia between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. The subregion occupies about 186,000 square miles and is quite mountainous. Transcaucasia is more susceptible to earthquakes and they feature a higher altitude than the rest of Eastern Europe. Much of the land there is at least one mile above sea level. The Caucasus Mountains feature the two tallest mountains of Europe. Mount Elbrus, which lies on the Russian side, reaches 18,510 feet. Georgia's Shkara, at 17,037 feet, is considered a serious mountaineering challenge. Now, if that's not your thing, you can still see the towering peak from the picturesque village of Ushguli. Now, that's a view. We climbed the mountains, so let's descend now to the flatter countries west of Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, and Poland. Belarus is landlocked, although it does contain 11,000 lakes within its borders. Ukraine borders the Black Sea to its south. Poland borders the Baltic Sea to its north, and the Vistula River splits the country right down the middle, flowing through the major cities of Warsaw, Krakow, and Gdansk and the Carpathian Mountains break up the flat plains with some spectacular panoramic vistas. Moving north, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania are known as the Baltic States because they all border the Baltic Sea. The Baltic States cover about 68,000 square miles. They feature long coastlines and small islands off the shore. There are over 7,000 lakes in the region, along with many swamps and the aforementioned peat bogs. Dense forest covers half of the land. Climate Eastern Europe largely has a continental climate, which is characterized by mild summers and cold, snowy winters. Typically, there is more rainfall in the warmer summer months. Tundra covers the northernmost lands and gives way to taiga as we move south, which consists of copious evergreen trees. This progresses into deciduous forest dotting the East European plain and eventually becomes mostly semi-arid grassland. As we move further and further east toward Asia, the warm Gulf Stream air coming off the Atlantic has a diminished influence on the climate, making summer highs and winter lows far more extreme. As a result, Eastern Europe is much snowier than Western Europe. Have you ever tried to plant a seed in the snow? It's not easy to get it to grow, is it? As you can guess, these extremes can lead to challenges for farming. In colder parts of Eastern Europe, the ground freezes in winter and then thaws in spring, creating flooding, a farming and transportation nightmare. Speaking of the cold, you might think of Russia and immediately want to put on a warm coat and a Yushanka. Yes, Russia can be quite cold, especially in its Siberian region in the far north. However, you may be surprised to find out that parts of Russia that border the Black Sea, such as Sochi, can be quite mild and feature popular beach resorts. Due to the proximity to their own sea, the Baltic states experience milder temperatures than inland zones at similar latitudes. These countries experience higher humidity and frequent cloud cover. Well, that about does it for the physical features of Eastern Europe, or Western Asia, or Central Eurasia. Nah, let's just stick with Eastern Europe. You get the point. We hope you enjoyed our trek across the landscape of this part of the world. It sure was quicker than walking, and quite a bit warmer. Until next time, keep exploring! Hey, hey.